at this point. And do a long come in. Greetings. Welcome to our show, Ghosts Are Near, where we discuss topics which are related to the paranormal. I'm your host, Keith Johnson, and with me is my lovely co-host, Sandra Johnson. Hello. Also happens to be my wife. That's me. We are the founders of New England Anomalies Research, and we investigate various aspects of the paranormal, as the name denotes. And I'd like to welcome our live studio audience, which we have with us this evening. So we're glad to have you with us. And we expect a lot of reaction. And also, we have a very special guest with us tonight, who is also a member of New England Anomalies Research, or NEAR. And uh, he and I have also, in the past, worked extensively together in the Atlantic Paranormal Society pre-Ghost Hunters. And so we go back quite a ways. He's a very dear friend. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mr. Andrew Graham. Hello, good evening. Driven, hey. all, the way, driven all the way from New Hampshire. Yes, absolutely. To be, to be on this show, and we, we're very glad to have you. We're it's glad you did. Yeah. And also I'd like to say, uh, extend my congratulations to Andrew, his uh, recent marriage, his lovely wife Kathleen, Congratulations, Andrew. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Andrew. Well, thank you. Lovely wedding. Lovely. Great reception. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> yes, and not only that. You did. <laughs> not only that, you had a wonderful honeymoon in Ireland. That is correct. Green Ireland. It's a Hun green country. Yeah. Now, uh, that's a place Sandra and I have always looked forward to going to. We've never been there. But, of course, we've heard a lot about the haunted castles and locations which are there. Do you have any experiences like that while you were there? Anything to do with the paranormal at all? Really, to be honest, um, you know, there were a few places that we visited that were reputed to be haunted. Uh -huh. um, I really didn't have much in the way of experiences there. Um, very surprisingly, I mean, we, we, we did visit some of the, the castle ruins, and we did go to some of the very old, old cemeteries, and I did take numerous pictures at them, as yeah. you've seen. Right. Um, the only, I mean, I did get, you know, when I, uh, under the caves underneath the Blarney Castle, I did get a couple of, of decent really? pictures. I got a, a, actually a very good uh, mist. Wow. that uh, Kathleen eventually, I showed her the pet came running out, and I said, hey, look, I got it, look what I got. And she, she was like, that's your breath. Oh. <laughs> no, it's not. I said, here, I'll prove it to you. And I went back inside, and no breath. Right. And it was a little cooler in there, but there was no breath. So, uh, you know, so far, so good. Mm -hmm. looks, like a, looks like a good picture. Otherwise, um, you know, we did, we did visit a lot of places. Everything was very serene, very calm. We huh. will be able to uh, get this picture up on the website Absolutely. so our viewers can see it. And, Absolutely. Uh, Yep, they can yes. decide sure. and give and their opinions. That. Not a problem at all. Great. Now, you mentioned you uh, were in some cemeteries there. How would you compare the cemeteries there to the cemeteries, say, in New England, as far as, like, the uh, paranormal aspects go? Well, um, most people, you know, if you go into cemeteries in New England, my, my experiences have been that a lot of times when you go into a New England cemetery, you find that the, the air can be very thick, you know, it gets, it's almost oppressive, you, get a, you might even feel a little uneasy in your stomach or in the pit of your stomach. Sometimes that, that, that tends to happen. My experience over there has been in the cemeteries that I was able to get into, honestly, there was none of that. It was just very calm, very quiet, very serene, um, just overall peaceful. Mm -hmm. There was not a, lot of, uh, not a lot of oppressiveness at all. And what would your opinion be as to why but what, what the difference uh, means or, or where the difference stems from between the, the cemeteries here and the ones over there? 
That's a really good question. I honestly don't. You don't have an opinion. <laughs> I don't have an opinion on that one. That I, I haven't really been able to come up with anything to explain that possible difference. One thing I do realize is there's there's a lot less, um, in, in at least what I've seen, there's there's a lot less vandalism. There's a lot there's a lot more respect for uh, for the dead and for the graves. You know, I that, think that, that could explain point. it. Yeah. So you know that that could be part of it. You know, there's that vandalism and that negativity will bring up. Um, you know, a negative, a more negative energy in the environment around it. Well, I, I agree. I don't believe cemeteries just naturally haunted per se. I think it's energy which is introduced there through vandalism, cult activity, what have you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's an interesting point. Now, Andrew, why don't you give our audience a little background on yourself, how you first became interested in investigating paranormal phenomena? Yes, did you have anything happen to you as, as a child? Or? That was the cat main catalyst there, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, quite honestly, um, there, you know, I did experience a few things as a child, things that are very difficult at this point in my life to differentiate between, you know, what was, what was you know, something that I saw while I was awake and what was like nightmares and dreams, mm -hmm. things like that. I, I, I did, you know, I do vaguely remember seeing in my house at night, you know, flying lights around the house and, uh, and one, once, twice that I can think of, I, I saw an apparition of a man in my house. Really? Um, nothing overly traumatic, but enough to scare me enough to not want to get out of bed in the middle of the night. Right. Um, after that, you know, it's the usual, usual crazy things that happen that condition you not to believe in any of that. So, um, no experiences other than that. And then, you know, I came down to Rhode Island for college, the New England Institute of Technology. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I had been reading, actually, I read a book about, uh, a book written by Ed and Lorraine Warren. Mm -hmm. And I read it, and I was like, that, nah, that mm -hmm. can't be true. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I figured I'd do a, do a quick search, see if I could find anybody that could actually show me some sort of proof. Mm -hmm. And I came across Jason Hawes of TAPS, and, and uh, we ended up meeting up, get, became good friends, and started investigating. And, um, yeah, now it's... A lot of interesting things out there that oh, I yeah. thought possible. Oh, yeah, that you didn't then. think so at the beginning, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now, this ho house you uh, grew up in, was that known for um, hauntings, or what, did it have some kind of history which may have caused it to be haunted? Or? Nothing that I know of. Um, it's, it was a fairly new house when my parents bought it. It was only like two previous owners at that mm -hmm. point, and they bought it right before I was born, so I, I lived yeah. my entire life in that house, and those were the only experiences I ever yeah. had. So you have no real explanation for why that happened to you, no. saw these things? No, mm -hmm. just uh, problem. You know, the only thing I can think of is that we're more open as children. We just see more. Mm -hmm. True, see more I agree. Out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why don't you share some of your experiences with the Atlantic Paranormal Society? This we want to hear about the cases. You know, of course, that's how you and I first met <laughs> and became <laughs> friends. And yes. Um, experiences with the Atlantic Paranormal Society cases. Um, well, I mean, when I first met up with Jason, he was going through a revamping of, of TAPS at the time. There was only myself and him. And I think there have been a few of those. Right. Yeah, <laughs> there's been a few revamps since then. But um, when he was going through the, he was moving from phase one into phase two, so to speak. And, um, you know, we, it, we started small, just doing cemeteries with some friends and whatnot. You, you and Carl were were involved in that and um, from there on when he started when we got our the new website up and running at that time mm -hmm. um, he started getting more calls into cases the most famous one the most popular one that everybody you like to talk about of yes. course was that that case up in in uh, north central Maine yes. somewhere that we drove to in the middle of a blizzard oh yes yeah and yeah. uh yeah, we, every you know every accident we saw every few miles got progressively worse, and we yes. were driving 25 miles. Yeah, I'll never 95. forget that. I'll never yeah, forget that. That was that was a fun time. That was a uh, that was a fun, that was a fun case. It was an mm -hmm. inhuman case. Um, yeah, yeah. You had to really want to get there to yeah. travel through that weather. I was a little nervous. Were the, were the clients desperate for someone to come in and help them? At the time, they had, um, if I remember correctly, what had happened was there was the, the, the parents and they had their two daughters and their son and their son's girlfriend. The, the son and, the, and his girlfriend were living uh, in a, a little apartment, in-law apartment that was built onto the house. <coughs> Excuse me. And... Um, you know, at one point, the reason they had called us that, that I can remember is at one point the son had woke up and his, he, you know, his, I guess he and his girlfriend were doing whatever and she was tickling him and um, at one point he thought she scratched him and he yelled at her and she said, that wasn't me. So they turned the lights on and he had uh, claw marks on his, on his legs and on his torso and I believe on his back. And um, 
did, they don't know where they came from. You know, it looked like somebody had clawed, you know, the forefinger claw there. Mm -hmm. And um, things were happening from there. They actually took a, a, a picture of one of the daughter's beds. It was a four post bed and her toothbrush was drilled through the bed. Um, things like that, you know, interesting, the interesting little toothbrush was drilled through the there bed. There was a toothbrush that was actually straight through the post. Head on one end, tail on the other, post in the middle. And no one knows how that happened. Nobody knows how it happened. They, they actually have a picture of it. The family has a, a, a picture, a photograph of the bed with the toothbrush straight through the post. Mm -hmm. It wasn't there when we got there, so I don't know if they pulled it out and fixed the bed or or whatever but um, and there were you know there were strange drawings on the walls pentagrams things like that in one of the bedrooms um, and they were there before the current family moved in that's, yeah, they, they did claim that they were there before the family moved in um, the family themselves I mean did they did have some issues they had some some family issues that they had mm -hmm. to get through mm -hmm. um, little dysfunction there but I mean when we got there that was it, it just turned into fun when Keith started tossing holy water around yeah. You know, he does that. He does. He does do that. He goes in and looks like a fireman with the, with the holy water. Right. Um, Can get interesting at that point. <laughs> he started uh, when he started when he started provoking. Then you know it, it started. Oh well, even before then we had uh, we were hearing you know doors slamming that weren't there, and uh, we caught some good EVPs and some some lights and whatnot. Um, the, the the holy water kind of instigated the whole thing. Yes. When the walls started mm -hmm. to growl and um, you know small things moving. Walls growling. Yeah. Did you get any audio of that? Uh, unfortunately, no. It was like surround sound, though. You stand in the middle of the room, and it comes from all four walls. It was kind of interesting. However, one of our members did get something on video, audio good, and video. Yeah, good EVP. Yeah, yeah very um, good EVP. That was the first night we were there. We were just kind of sitting back and observing, and uh, had a video camera set up in the in-law apartment where we decided to inhabit pretty much every room in the house but that room. And uh, something slammed, and even on the video, it doesn't show. It was from the apartment. We don't know what it was. Sounded like a, almost like a locker door, but there was nothing of the sort in there. Nothing moved in video. Um, but just before we walked in to check it out on the video, there was an, a, a, a child's voice that said, they're coming. And then um, a very deep, throaty, kind of gravelly voice that said, they're here. Kind of growled it. I, I find that very interesting because as long as we, my, myself and, and the group have been investigating, of course, you know, I investigated somewhat with TAPS as well, mm -hmm. I haven't been able to pick up any kind of uh, EVPs or, or audio phenomena on video, only on uh, tape recordings for some reason. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the video that we were using was a, um, if I remember, it was uh, Jason, no, it was Rich's video camera yeah, so it was yeah. a uh, it was a, uh, a digitally magnetic tape so it was a mixture of a digital and magnetic recording so it may have picked up something that other things couldn't have I don't know mm. um, but I have I have seen and heard audio on other videos with EVP as well it's not as common as, as just a regular tape recorder or, or a digital recorder I think mm -hmm. mm. and I remember you were elected to go into the attic to kind of crawl up into it and yes, spray some holy water and uh, tell us the result of that. The result of that um, <laughs> story I have to always tell this. As story. as you like to call the uh, the the movie fall when uh, Jason hoisted me up into this little like two by two hole in the in the, yeah. in the ceiling, yeah. and uh, said, "Okay, yeah, just jump out and I'll catch you." Yes, right. So I'll I, catch you. The wall I would have liked to have corner. seen that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happened. Oh, I wish I had that on video. Uh, <laughs> so don't we all? I no, I would have liked to have seen Jason catch him. <laughs> well. He didn't really catch you all the way, as I remember. Did no. you kind of slam down and? Uh... Yeah, basically the wall and the floor caught me. Yeah, was was kind of. Yeah, and you got gashed. And Jason and... actually kind of stood back. I think he pulled the whole. <laughs> Whoa! Kind of yeah, get well, out of the way. Hey, whatever it takes, we we'll get the job done. Uh, yeah. You know that that that's commitment. You know? That's. I know that's... you had a big. Cut time. your arm and everything. Oh yeah, I had a know. nice little cut on my hand. I had a, about a three-inch splinter through the palm of my hand from the attic. There, oh. it was, that was kind of nice. <laughs> so something to take home with you, right? Battle, yeah. battle scars. Right. Yeah. Right. But anyway, uh, tell us the outcome of that. Uh, the outcome of, of that investigation, um, you had. Yeah, I remember you commenced. You did your blessing, and, and the walls growled some more, and the you know the huge bird cage rattled itself across the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, and from there on out, by the time we had left that house, it was it was clean. There was nothing there, mm -hmm. you know. And it was it was uh, it was pretty peaceful there, yeah. and the family was was quite happy. I know we got called back at some point that they were having more problems, and we did bless the house again. Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't heard from them since. I know I know you've been in contact 
right. a little bit, but mm -hmm. that's uh, as far as I know. There's there's not much else going on there. Yeah, well, we seem to have uh, remedied that situation for the time you know, being. That, that that's what I would yes for the time being. It does sound like it was a, an interesting case. It was I wish I had very, been on that one. Very, very <laughs> interesting, very dangerous. Right. You know, very, one of our most dangerous cases. But uh, I remember uh, Brian Hanwa and I went into the uh, chicken coop to complete the blessing, and there were these chickens just frozen solid, half in ice. They just like died oh, yeah. like that, and uh, just frozen to the ground. Yeah. It's very cold in Maine. Well, yeah, I'm a, yeah <laughs> right, you got right, to th figure that. Too. Three, four foot snow drifts and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you just had these chickens that looked like they had been left out. They probably died of of uh, of uh, exposure. Yeah. And they were just frozen to the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, they yeah. weren't they weren't decomposed at all. They yeah. were just there. Then in the basement, we came across a desiccated deer head. I mean, it wasn't mounted or anything. No eyes or anything. It was just. Just there. That we almost tripped over it. They were going to get around to the mounting. They, they were, yeah, yeah, they were eventually. Getting around to their spring cleaning. Yeah. Uh, they, they also had a couple of old Volkswagen Beetles in the barn, but oh yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and just you know stuff Cute. everywhere. There the was, barn the, was dangerous too. The, the barn was very there, dangerous. Yeah. Um, the barn was was one of those places where you really had to watch your step. Yeah, not only that overhead. I know um, Bill of Maine Paranormal was in there, mm -hmm. and uh, he was investigating in there at one time, and a beam just slid off. And just just, just about missed them. Yeah. Jumped out of the way just in time. So. Yeah. Was this a case that you did in conjunction with Maine Paranormal, or? They had actually. They weren't there when we were there. They had called us in actually. Oh. So, they kind of said, well, whatever's here, we think it might be of an inhuman nature. So, could you please come in and uh, kind of see what's going on there? So, uh, we did. Yep. Leads me to leads me to think that the, you know at least before, I don't know about the family but before the family there might have been some occult activity there with the, with oh, the drawings on the so, walls yeah. and the deer yeah, heads and into that, yeah. all the dead chickens and you never know yeah mm -hmm. well it could be could that'll be bring in the that. negativity I, I would it imagine mm -hmm. absolutely yeah because the family hadn't lived there that long they'd only lived there like six months or so I right they had just moved in if I remember yeah. correctly mm -hmm. so that's that was that was the the, the famous case that was. The Keith's favorite. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I'll never forget that one. Keith's favorite case. Keith's favorite moment. Me falling out of the attic. <laughs> well, it was just. It, it was like floor. like a, a movie moment. It just you went out in fast motion, you know, and it was just <laughs> it was over before you knew it. And yeah, you know, it was it was pretty fast from my point of view too. Yeah, right, I bet. I bet. <laughs> the floor rushing up at me. Yeah, exactly. And now the story will be broadcast to such a wider audience. Yeah, the, hey, you know. Very uh, exciting. I mean, right now in, in the in the paranormal <laughs> circle, as long as Keith's talking about me, I'm known as the guy that fell out of the attic. So. Well, I think it's a true campfire story moment. So. That's it. It was a good one. Yeah. That was a good one. The, the, you didn't talk about the time that I fell out of the barn at the same house. No. You know well, that, that was that, the, that uh, did happen too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was my accident prone case too. Yeah, Purple Heart for Paranormal Investigation after I that, did. right? Yes. I did. I left my Purple Heart home, but oh, well. <laughs> wear it next time. I, I'll try. Yeah, I'll try. So after the Atlantic Paranormal Society, I know, of course, you moved to New Hampshire, relocated, mm -hmm. and I don't know how much exactly uh, paranormal investigation you were doing up there. I know you you did a case occasionally. Yeah, I was I was kind of on an on-call basis. I, I really yeah. when I moved up there, it was it was work related and. Um, free time just kind of went down the tubes and yeah mm -hmm. um, at that point in time I was I was just uh, I, I was trying to do as much as I could but it was just wasn't time allowing right it wasn't happening so much but every once in a while yeah I mean Jason would call me and I'd come down or or we'd meet up somewhere and, and we were still in touch and, and I did st I did still do a couple of cases here and there but mostly on my own just kind of research mm -hmm. at the time well, I noticed that uh, your picture is still on the members page of the Atlantic Paranormal Society. And right. uh, the title is Research Agent. So. Yeah, the title Research right. Agent. Just like uh, myself, I'm available for consultation with, for uh, possible demonic cases, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, as well as my brother Carl. Right. Yeah. But um, of course, you know, since we've organized uh, New England Anomalies Research, we're, we're so glad to have you on board with us. Why? Well, thank you. We, we value uh, actually, experience. though. To back it up a little bit, there there was another organization in between <laughs> that that you that you formed yourself and founded. That was, that was my that was my attempt at actually starting my my group in New Hampshire. When I started to get that little bit of free time, I, I started to organize a New Hampshire Paranormal uh, Research Group and actually started getting calls from people that wanted to be part of it, mostly from Rhode Island and <laughs> Massachusetts. And it's like, Ghost Hunter Central. <laughs> right, yeah. uh, I guess we're sticking to the Rhode Island area. Um, so I started to do that, and actually before I got any, any cases off the ground with that, I actually started getting in touch with you guys and 
you know, figured the heck with it. You know, why do my own thing when I can work with the pros? Well, thank you, and we're, we're very glad to have you. And uh, if I could brag about you a little bit, you're also... Uh, oh, please, go right ahead. <laughs> you're also an accomplished martial arts instructor. Uh, yeah. Want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, that was, that, that was my, my past career was uh, teaching martial arts, Shaolin mm -hmm. Kung Fu. Um, did that for about... I taught that. I taught for about two years. I, I was practicing it for about four. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I had been in martial arts all my life, and it was just some, kind of a fun job to, mm -hmm. to get into. Yeah. D did you find that um, your experience with martial arts uh, helped you at all uh, in your um, investigation of the paranormal? What it really did was not necessarily, the martial arts kind of got me in touch a little bit more with the energy side, mm -hmm. um, and it got me in touch with, with um, more in tune with people in general. But I can't really attribute that to the martial arts. That was more the sales training that I got from, you know, running a school yeah. mm -hmm. and whatnot. Was actually being, you know, being able to read people and getting a little bit more in tune with them. Mm -hmm. So I, I do have a few things that I could take away from that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, you're an interesting guy. You do martial arts and paranormal investigation. I mean, and now a TV show. Well, what's next? Well, maybe the the near movie. Yeah, the near movie. <laughs> sounds good to me. Yeah. <laughs> near goes to Hollywood. Yeah, that, that, Hollywood Hollywood bust. yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> well, we'll start it here. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Is there anything you'd like to add about some of the uh, experience you've had in paranormal investigation, or? We know you've been on more than just that main uh, oh, yeah, case. Yeah. Been on I've, I've been on some interesting ones. Um, <laughs> mostly, you know, the, what we find with most cases, most um, most inhuman cases, at least negative cases, yeah. is you find that there's more problems with the family than there is That's with the true. paranormal. It can get very um, complicated. Yeah. You know, case in point where the, the, the case that we went to, you were there as well on this one in, in Massachusetts where um, the young lady and her husband were having some problems. They had two young children involved. Um, and the, the husband thought we were all just absolute weirdos to be there yeah. looking for what she was experiencing and he didn't, you know, he wasn't seeing anything. You're that right. seems to be a common scenario. He was in total denial. Um, either that or he just didn't want to see it, you know. It's, it yeah. was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things were happening. I mean, that was another one. I mean, we did, I, I did hear some growls on that, but that was more a case of, you know, handprints showing up in the steamy mirrors, lights turning on and off, balls of light flying around, curtains moving, things like that. Yeah. Um, not terribly harmful, but enough to scare the wits out of this poor woman. Yeah. And um, her husband was just, you know, the, whatever tension they had between them, it was just uh, her husband was just pulling even further. Yeah, it seemed to be this. feeding it. Yeah, yeah, it, it was certainly um, it was certainly adding to the tension there. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder what what your opinion is. I know Keith has an opinion on this, but um, why why do you think that that scenario seems to repeat itself so often, where the husband seems to be uh, in denial or claims he doesn't experience anything? The wife is seems to be experiencing a lot. The children claim to experience things. We seem to encounter that situation. Well, from my own knowledge, um, just the things that I've seen and things that I've researched and whatnot, the, the best thing I can say is, if for, first of all, with the children, I mean, children are just more open. They mm -hmm. see and experience more than any adult ever will. Um, the, the, the husband not experiencing anything or not seeing anything a lot of times if you're in a situation, in my mind, where there's tension between a husband and wife mm -hmm. and um, you know the wife starts seeing things or she starts experiencing things, part of it might be because of the negativity that they brought into their marriage. They're just attracting more and more negative energy and they're building it up and she might even be creating it. Mm -hmm. um, or he might be creating it and he's just in denial about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, generally what I find is that um, when the when the the wife is seeing things and the husband's just claiming that she's not so my opinion usually is at that point if he's not in denial he is generally he's generally just you know telling her she's nuts because he's ticked at her mm -hmm. you know he thinks she's being stupid you know and if he's angry at the time it's just going to make him angrier that she's acting in his mind erratically or irrationally mm -hmm. and it's gonna mm -hmm. it's gonna throw it's gonna burn him up a little bit more and he's gonna get madder and start lashing out about it. You're right, right, mm -hmm. true. That's, that's kind of my opinion on it. Mm -hmm. Now getting back to the topic of demonology, of course, as, as you know, there are a lot of groups out there. Well, we, we know 
paranormal investigation groups are springing up all the time. Right. It's becoming more and more popular. Now with the advent of the TV show Ghost Hunters, you know, people see that, and, oh, that's so cool, I want to do that, and, and they're really springing up. But then you get into the uh, negative, the really possibly inhuman or negative destructive cases that a lot of groups aren't really prepared for or equipped for when they get into this. Mm -hmm. And even a lot of established groups do not like to take inhuman cases on. They will, uh, you know, prefer to call somebody, which, you know, I recommend that they call somebody in to consult and everything. I did that when I was first starting out. So um, I don't know if you have anything to add to that about new groups just starting up and they, they may not be prepared for what they're about to encounter. Well, pretty much what you just said. I mean, it's, it's a smart move. If you don't know what you're dealing with, get somebody that knows what they're dealing with involved. I mean, I, I would be the first person to say I have not had a whole lot of experience with a demon, with uh, inhuman or demonologist mm -hmm. uh, related cases. So I would refer to you, so to speak, on that, where you're the demonologist in the group, you and Carl. And um, generally what I would say is if you've got something and you don't know what it is, it's kind of like having uh, it being near a dog if you're not used to dogs. Right. right. If you're not used to dogs and you've never been around a dog, don't approach a pit bull. Right. You know? It's just the way I look at it. Don't don't go messing with things that you don't have experience with. Mm -hmm. Refer to the authorities or to mm -hmm. the, the people that know what they're what they're dealing with. Yeah. There's but, always the clergy uh, yeah, to right, contact exactly. as well. If, if, mm -hmm. if there's no demonologist in town, <laughs> that's right. Absolutely, go to your priest. Go to go to your local church or you know whatever whatever you believe in or whatever whatever religion or faith or church that you belong to. Go see them if you have no if you have if that's the only option you have or. You know, if that's not the route you go, then yeah, you have to go, you have to search, you have to find, you know, like a demonologist, you have to find somebody that knows what they're talking about. You know, the people don't realize that, you know, when they get into this field, they're dealing with things that are, especially when you get into demonology, you're dealing yep. with things that are hell-bent on destruction, pardon the pun, and they're very intelligent, they know you better than you know you, they know what you're thinking, they know what you're afraid of, and they're going to use it against you. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's right. Very well put. Very, very well put. Well said. And uh, a lot of people don't realize when you're in a situation like this investigating a house that may be demonically infested, you're being watched all the time you're yeah. there. Oh, yes. I mean, they know you're coming before you get They're there. They're keeping a close eye yeah, on you. Yeah, absolutely. Everything. Yeah, and uh, just, just your every move is being watched. They're looking for weaknesses. They're, they're looking for openings. And you and I have both seen uh, instances where we may be upstairs or come downstairs, other investigators are, in, are fighting with each other, they, mm -hmm. they're turned against each other. The, just the, the tension there, the energy level is so high, sometimes you just cut it with a knife and it's yeah. just, uh, that could be an influence. Absolutely, I mean, you've got, you've got you know, things here too that will use you to turn you against each other mm -hmm. and create more negative energy so right. that they can feed off of that, get that little bit stronger and then, mm -hmm. you know, take you out from there. Right. Mm -hmm. So what's on the horizon for you? What's what's going on in the future? On Any? the horizon for me, uh, yeah. hopefully, a whole lot more great fun cases. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, well, not to sound negative, but hopefully a whole lot of inhuman cases. Those well, are, I yeah. found them to be fun. They're interesting. They, they are. A lot of people they will are. shrink away from them. In a sense, I, I find them fascinating. Yeah. You know, they are, they are the most fascinating kind of cases, I would say. And uh, you know what we've been discussing? What we really need is um, the near jet. The near jet. The yeah. near jet, right. because every day we get cases. We get people contacting us, Absolutely. you know, from all over the country, mm -hmm. asking us to come and help. Right. And we have no way of, of reaching these yeah. people. Yeah. Well, we're about out of time, and I would really like to thank you, Andrew, for stopping by and being a part of our show. We're very grateful, and it was wonderful to have you. Thank you, sir. And, uh, well, we invite you to tune into our next show, and uh, thank you for joining us tonight. And Stay safe and God bless. Good night. <laughs>